What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back. Today we have a special episode. We have the top 50 rock-ish bass players from the 1980s. So I did a drummer one, did a guitar player one, so bass, got to do bass. Um, one sort of thing about bass players uh, that is, it's kind of tough to... Uh, it, they, some bass players that are excellent bass players are not flashy guys. Like say a guy like Flea or Steve Harris from Iron Maiden or Stu Ham or some of these guys that are very, very technically brilliant. Um, it's difficult to have to compare them with guys that are excellent bass players, do their job excellent, but aren't, you know, doing crazy stuff. So... It's a little bit different than picking all the shredders, the shrapnel guys and all the sweet picking, alternate picking, legato, fast stuff. Bass is a little bit different. So I hope I do it justice. I added 10 more because I've, you know, I've got some few session guys in there and I really wanted to, <laughs> there's a few guys that it's like, ah, I can't get it down to 40 because then you're, you're chopping some guys. Else. You guys might think my, my list is fat and pathetic anyways, but we'll, we will see. So let's get started. So in no particular order, again, because this is too crazy to put in order, let's get going. So at number, or our first guy, we have from level level 42, Mark King. I don't know why I never listened to these guys back in the 80s. Like, it would have been right up my alley for whatever reason. Never listened to them. I mean, obviously, you know some of their big songs. but And then I saw this guy singing and playing bass at the same time. I'm like, how is he doing that? So, legend, bass player, singer, Mark King. Another bass player, singer, legend, we have Getty Lee from Rush. Same sort of thing I could say about Getty. Uh, like, the guys, like, I remember the song Turn the Page, and he's singing this intricate bass line, and then singing over top, he's playing this intricate bass line and singing over top of it. And I'm like, I, I can, like, just to even strum a guitar and then sing a song, I have a hard time with. So these guys are doing, like, syncopated stuff. And completely diff different rhythmic um, uh, execution there. And uh, these guys are just freaks. So that's Getty Lee. All right. A little bit different sort of style bass player, but probably just as famous, if not maybe more famous, is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, really like this these guys' old stuff. Um, you know, Uplift Mofo, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Awesome albums. Loved his playing on every track. He's such a beast on, on, on those 80s ones. He changed their style changed a bit when they went into the '90s and then on to the 2000s. Um, a little bit more accessible for the average listener, but um, for us guys that like that anger from the punk era, like we can always go back. Next, from Doc and Dio and Lynch Pilson, we have Jeff Pilson, really good bass player. Uh, yeah, I had to add him on the list. Next, another legend we have from Aerosmith, Tom Hamilton. I know Sweet Emotion came out in. The 70s, what was that, 75, 76, Toys in the Attic. Um, but uh, the guy's a legend, awesome bass player. Everybody in Aerosmith is great. Next, uh, another really, really different, but like one of the best is uh, Tony Levin from, uh, I'll say, Peter Gabriel. Do, 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 like his sledgehammer bass line, that's, is so, it's such a cool bass tone. It's really sort of stunning sticky I, I can't explain how it is but there's a i'll see if i can find there's a, an isolated track and it, it really sounds very cool i remember back in college uh, a guy was saying that he played through roland stereo chorus bass amp or guitar amp somebody said that that was the case i don't know if that was true i should have done my research 2011 legend uh next another legend also session stuff. We've got Pino Palladino from with uh, he played with Don Henley and Eric Clapton through the eighties. Obviously John Mayer and then many many others. Pino Palladino. Next, this guy is one of the coolest guys for bass players. We have John Taylor from Duran Duran. That bass line from Rio rips. This guy is a very musical bass player. Uh, for rock, this guy is is awesome. I, lo I love his playing. Another awesome player that is a bit more technically skilled than 
maybe people will realize it's Duff McKeegan from Guns N' Roses. Um, got some really nice uh, musical bass lines through his playing. He's, he's a very, very good player. I think he was more of a punk guy back in like the late 70s, early 80s, and then got into GNR. And yeah, the guys, the guys are really cool. I read his autobiography. He's a very interesting dude. Smart as a cookie, sharp, sharp as a tack. <laughs> Smart as a cookie. <laughs> I'm blonde, whatever. Duff. Uh, next, one of the most recognizable bass lines of the 80s we have from Queen. John Deacon. Ding, 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 ding. Or uh, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Mind you, I think it was the same bass player. It was the same bloody key. I don't know why they did that. John Deacon from Queen. Uh, next, a uh, really, really skilled, talented player that passed away way too soon. From, uh, yeah, we would probably know him better from Chic, but he played with Madonna, Power Station, and Rod Stewart through the 80s. That's Bernard Edwards. Brilliant, brilliant player. Him and uh, Nile Rodgers were quite quite the duo, man. They had some awesome, awesome music. It was just fucking pneumonia, man. He died from pneumonia while he was in Japan. It's so sad. And, like, avoidable. Terrible. That's Bernard Edwards. Next, from The Who, John Entwistle. When I was a kid growing up, like, I remember seeing him doing his thing where he was just sort of standing, and he had that sort of, I think it was from the 78, the Who uh, uh, Who Are You tour. There's a video of them playing. He's kind of wearing this jacket, and he's got the <laughs> filthy hair and mustache. But he did this sort of a galloping, a little more striking onto the onto the fretboard this way. He gave it definitely a different, very different tone. Him and Keith Moon, very different sort of styles that gave the Who a, Totally, totally different sound. John Entwistle, The Who. Next, we have a little bit of an obscure guy for me. I didn't really realize who this guy was and then discovered him just recently. His name is Mike Watt. He was in The Minute Man. He played with some other punk guys, but this guy is a great bass player, especially if you're doing more punk. Now, I said rock, but this guy is that good. So come on into my list. That's Mike Watt. Next, another very, very, very familiar face if you've seen some of the big artists perform. It's Nathan Easts. He played with Eric Clapton. Who else did he play with? And Kenny Loggins through the through the 80s. Obviously, a ton of session work. He's one of the best bass players in the world. Uh, David Foster uses him all the time. It's actually funny. My friend Susie, my bestie in L.A., she's one of those people. She's a professional photographer she takes photos of uh she was the official photographer for the david foster foundation for years and so she got to meet a lot of these players han zimmer's orchestra and uh a lot of these big bands like the guys that will play with david foster so she was friends with got to meet nathan east and became friends with them so i remember when i was staying with those guys i'm like oh she's like comes home and i'm at home hey, what, are you, what are you watching i says oh there's this new documentary this is a guy named nathan east he's a bass player you might know him. Like, oh really i'm gonna text him you know, fast forward a few years later, she's up in Canada visiting. And she's like, oh, I just got a text. So who's that from? Oh, Michael Bolton. And then she's, oh, yeah, I got one from David Foster and then one from Sinbad. I guess she it was at an event. Hey, can I get those photos? Can I get those photos? Can I get those photos? And then, like, it's, she doesn't care. But I'm just, like, geeking out. You know Nathan East? You know David Foster? You know Hans Zimmer? You know like, Guthrie Govan? You know all these guys? Oh, yeah, I know them. They're cool. <laughs> she's awesome. I love her. Miss her been a while uh next we have a little bit more punky would i say punky i don't know what you'd call this from the band fish fishbone norwood fisher there is a song that he plays well he plays bass on in all their songs but there's a song he's playing bass on called bone in the boneyard and it's got this thing where he's kind of like where he's kind of tapping with the the, the string and then plucking back up with kind of get this uh doug wimbush does that as well so he is a really underrated bass player norwood fisher very busy very accurate those him and his brother phil were awesome an awesome duo norwood fisher from fishbone next from the okay living colors first bass player we have muzz skillings muzzy he does a song he did it like their uh second album time's up there's a song called ology and it's a little song that he did. It's about 90 seconds long. It's a little sort of a thing, and it just it's sort of a loop. And he does this beautiful, beautiful bass solo over top. It just 
so tasty. But I don't know what he, I think he went to, he wanted to be a fireman. <laughs> so maybe after he saw the living color, you know, the grunge thing and all that. So he's like, okay, I'm out of here. But who knows? Awesome bass player, though. I'll put that link of that ology song in the bottom there, in the description. Next, we have a really well traveled rock metal guy, Rudy Sarzo from Cuba. Ozzy, Quiet Riot, White Snake. This guy played with some uh, some good. He's a really good bass player too. Next, we have from Steve Vai, Flex Abel, and Joe Satriani, the slap and pop machine from the eighties. It's Stu Ham. I actually got to see Stu and Greg Howe in Ottawa, twenty eighteen. Yeah, awesome player. Awesome player. Legend. Uh, if you've not heard his uh, his bass solo that he does, uh, do, 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 like the, kind of the Charlie Brown thing, awesome. Next, from Motley Crue, Nicky Six. I know he's not like the best bass player, but when it comes to rock, he's actually a good bass player for for being just a, a rock bass player. And he writes a lot of their stuff, if not most of their stuff. Nicky Six. Uh, another underrated guy, Ian Hill from Judas Priest. Tasty stuff, some cool, cool riffs, um, British Steel. He's just a really good player. Next, might get some hate for this one, but Gene Simmons from Kiss. Can't deny that bass line from I Love It Loud. Hopefully he was the guy that actually played the bass on it. <laughs> but I've heard him play live, and these things are not, uh, the versions that I've heard live are bootlegs, so there's no uh, going back and post and then fixing up the errors. And he's a good player. He's a good live player, too. Um, he's can be a bit annoying, but he's still a good bass player. Next, another legend bass player that's not really known for his bass playing so much, more for his amazing harmonies. We have Michael Anthony from Van Halen. He really made that sound of that band with those background vocals, man. He was awesome. Good, really good bass player. I remember <laughs> when I was a kid watching the Jump video, 1984. I'm pretty sure that was when it came out. And I'm watching the solo, like Eddie doing the, do, 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 and he's doing his tapping and all this stuff, and Michael and he's do 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 do, and I'm like, well, how come that guy with the mustache and beard, how come he doesn't get to do any solos? <laughs> I'm blonde, okay. Next from the band Winger, we've got Kip Winger. He studied at Juilliard. He's a very very excellent musician. Um, the wing, <laughs> the name is not the best. But he is a great player. So that's Kip Winger from Winger. Next, another really good player from a really great band. We have Pat Badger from Extreme. I think Pat's a bit underrated. He actually used to work at that bass company. I forget the name of it. I'll put it under the bottom. But the one that bass that Chris Squire plays, that kind of like a little bit of a sort of flame teardrop sort of thing, he actually worked at that bass company manufacturer in Massachusetts, I believe. Um, but yeah, Pat Badger, Extreme. Next, from uh, Blue Murder and The Firm, we have Tony Franklin, Mr. Fretless. Um, really was a tasty player in Blue Murder. Great background vocals, too. That band that was a great power trio. I really wish that would have done better. So that's Tony Franklin. Okay. And now a word from our sponsor. Word. And welcome back. Up next, we have from Racer X, John Aldretti, or is it Juan? I'm not sure. His uh, his uh, Wikipedia says Juan. So Juan Aldretti. If you've not heard the song Scarified, you should check it out. Uh, next, we have from Toto Eddie Rabbit and a session meister Dave Huntgate. These guys, this guy has a huge resume, huge, huge resume. That's Dave Hungy, David Hungy. Up next, my favorite bass player singer in the world we have from the world's most dangerous band, Mr. Will Lee. I'm a huge, huge, huge David Letterman fan and loved watching this guy play his. He had a Valley Arts bass there for a while. I know he played a Fender Jazz, but then he got into doing the Sadowski stuff there for since the end of time so until present day <laughs> sorry 
Uh, next, one of the most famous bass players in the world, we have Sting. He's actually a very good musician. He, he can play guitar very well, and he can play bass very well. He's got some great, li great, great lines, great uh, some bass bass parts that he's played. Next, another session guru, and also from Phil Collins, we have Lee Sklar, the Bearded Wonder. David Letterman's going for this guy's look, except for the hair. Dave cuts his hair, but uh, awesome bass player. Another, most of these guys are awesome. Up next, a little bit l less well-known, we have from the band uh, Joy Division and New Order, uh, Peter Hook. Um, and there's some Joy Division songs with some interesting bass lines. Uh, New Order, they're actually very good players, New Order and... Uh, and uh, Joy Division, he, him and, and the drummer, what the hell is it? Or is that Simple Minds? I can't remember. <laughs> I'll double check when I, uh, when, I, when I post this. Next, a really great singer-bass player. We have Benjamin Orr from The Cars. Um, yeah, this guy could sing and play bass very well. Great, great musician. Rest in peace, Ben. Up next, another less well-known guy from The Jam. We have... Bruce Foxton. These guys were way better than I realized. Like, I think it was this new wave thing, and there's these rockers and uh, the. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot the the the. Uh, uh, what is the word? The fads, dabs, mods, mods and rockers. Yes. Now, I guess these guys were the sharp-dressed dudes, but uh, the the drummer has some power toms that would put Cozy Powell to shame, and then this bass player has some awesome lines, man. He is good. He filled up a lot of space. Really good player. That was Bruce Foxton from The Jam. Up next, one of my favorite bands as a kid growing up was U2, and this is Adam Clayton, their bass player. Uh... Where the streets have no name. The old 16th notes going on there. Next, a really, really uh, technically excellent bass player from Missing Persons, Pat O'Hearn. Um, I have some uh, killer performances. I think I have from Terry Bosey, and one of them is, or no, I don't really have. The Purple Lagoon is a really, really cool track. I, I don't know if I've, I've shared that or not yet, but... Uh, Got a really awesome bass player, bass solo from Pat O'Hearn. Up next, um, I didn't really know who this guy was. No, I knew. Um, but you guys all know the bass line. It's Lewis Johnson from the bass player from Billy Jean. Another high, very, very, very well recorded, let's see, thoroughly recorded bass player through the 70s and 80s, Lewis Johnson. Up next, one of the bigger dudes of this list. We've got Scott Tunis from Frank Zappa. Scott's a big dude. He's about 6'5". I'm 6'3", but he's big, thick. I remember watching him play bass with Steve Vai in September 93. He was the bass player. Abe Laboreal Jr. on drums and Steve with Devin Townsend. That was a Commodore ballroom. Got to meet Devin. Got to meet Steve. It's a good time. Scott Tunis. Up next... Probably one of the best metal bass players out there. We've got Frankie Bello from Anthrax. There's a guy that does, uh, he plays bass lines on, I, I don't know if it's called the Bass Channel or whatever, but he uh, he does a version, I think it's called Caught, I think it's Caught in a Mosh. And the bass line is very difficult. It's This guy is a great, great bass player, great metal player, Frankie Bello. Next, Canadian boy coming up. Kenny, the spider, Sinave. He played with Streetheart, Loverboy, and a lot of other Canadian acts. I just, I've been, I was on a bit of a Streetheart bender, and this guy is awesome. He has got tasty riffs. My good friend Eric Nystrom and I remember going over to this guy. I remember <laughs> there was a kid in our school, Dion Fiorazzo. Japanese guy, no kidding. Italian. He says, oh, because Eric, they live close together. He says, oh, my uncle, he plays bass, and he just lives, you know, a, two blocks from where you guys are. I'll see if, you know, he wants to have you guys over and show you his stuff and all that. 
So one day we went over there, go see Rob Firazo. We had to switch his name. Firazo didn't work, so we called him Furry Asshole. <laughs> we get over there. Rob's got a collection of vinyl around 3,000 records. I couldn't believe how much vinyl that guy had and didn't have a store. Um, then he pulls out his Odyssey bass with dual Bartolini humbucker pickups. I think weighed about 20 pounds. <laughs> And he had one of those uh, guitar, I think it was a, like when they had like leather on the padding on the side, like custom, and it just was, they had like those port holes and all that. But he played uh, YYZ and La Villa Strangio. He's a very good bass player. Not like small fingers and just surprised how, how, how easily he could move on that, uh, move on that, uh, the fretboard but one of the i remember asking him like who is the best bass player you know because we were me and eric were all about Ginny lee and rush and all that and he's like this guy named spider and i didn't find out about just a few years ago i mean i went away to go see him probably like in 1987 1988 and then i just discovered this kenny guy well maybe i'd heard him before but it didn't make note and then listen to the street heart stuff this guy is great canadian too kenny Snave. next uh, one of the best metal bass players of all time. Unfortunately, he passed away many years ago. Cliff Burton from Metallica. If you've not heard his bass solo, you've obviously been uh, living under a rock. So go check it out. Next, from Robert Palmer and Pink Floyd, we have Guy Pratt. Um, yeah. Next, you guys all know this guy. You all know his most famous bass line. It is growly and tasty and so good. We have Chris Squire from the band Yes. Or if you're in Quebec, it's the band We. Next, a relative of mine from Black Sabbath and Gary Moore. We have Glenn Hughes. So I've never met him. My mom's never met him. We've never met him. But somehow, my... Mums, mums, mum, Minnie Hughes is related to his grandma or mom or something. I don't know. So we're like fourth cousins. I just remember my mom saying, oh, you know this guy? And had she had a cutout from National Enquirer. It was a, a, a photo of him with Linda Blair from uh, The Exorcist. He's like, oh, that's your cousin somehow. And I'm like, oh, wow, my cousin's Glenn Hughes. <laughs> Never met him, but whatever. Somehow we're related. I guess we're all related in some way. <laughs> Just a little bit farther down the line. Next, one of the coolest bass players out there with his bass tone. Very, very original. You got Doug Pinnock from King's X. Was listening to these guys the other day. Really loved uh, the Out of the Silent Planet and Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. I usually always gravitate towards the old stuff. Getting down there. Up next... Very, very good bass player. I didn't realize how good he was. Checked him out just recently. It's Geezer Butler from Black Sabbath. Next. Uh, I thought this guy was a bit more in the 90s, but I checked out his, his resume. He did some great work in the 80s, too. I uh, actually got to meet him in 93 when I watched him play with his band, uh, Living Color. This is Doug Wimbish, who had played with Mick Jagger in the 80s. Next, from Slaughter, we have Dana Strum. You put out that, that, that one album they put out was great. Here's another one that had some really iconic uh, bass lines from Faith No More, Billy Gould. And that epic, I think that's 88 or 89. Great album. He had some cool bass lines. So, last two, who, who, am I, who have I not said? Who can you think? Hope you can get it. So, number 49, another guy that I've actually met. We've got from Mr. Big and the David Lee Roth Band and Talis, Bill he, Billy Sheehan. If you've not heard the NV412 song that he does his little bass solo on, check it out. It's pretty great. Got to meet him in 92 with Mr. Big. Pat Torpy, who passed away. Actually, he was really friendly. My good friend Ravi, who is Sikh, so he wears a turban. My drumming buddy, 
uh, we were at the concert there, and he started talking to Ravi. Oh, Gandhi, you know, that stuff. Pow is just a really sweet guy. Last but not least, one of the most amazing right hands in rock. You know who it is. Come on. It's Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. I first heard about this guy being an awesome bass player from my sister's first sort of boyfriend, Ron Botrikoff. He played a bit of bass back in junior high, and I remember him coming over and saying, oh, check out this, check out that. He says, look at his right hand. Look at it go. I didn't get it at the time. And then when I'm trying to learn those bass lines, I'm like, what the? <laughs> Give me a pick. He plays it with his hands, man. This guy is a freak. So, yeah, that's my list. The top 50 rock. Who did I leave off the list? I know I took some flack from my last video. Um, we got some, some guys in the comments, and they made some good points. I did, I did maybe put a couple guys on there that shouldn't have been but whatever i'm expecting you guys we have a community here you call me out if if i'm if i'm talking crap just bring it up and say hey you know what you made a mistake here this is not to that extent but if i'm screw up please tell me i want to learn i want to improve and i want to do good for you guys so let me know what you think in the comments and i will catch you guys on the next one which is probably going to be vocalists so i'll have to do my homework so until then i'll catch you then until then i'll catch you then <laughs> peace